and welcome to the Bid Feed Kitchen. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Gemma and I'm Head of Customer Marketing at Bid Feed. And I'm really pleased to be joined by Wayne Wright, who is our culinary development chef for the cost sector. We've got a really, really action-packed day ahead of us. And we're really pleased in this session to be kicking off by looking at healthier swaps for the cost sector. We know that budgets are tight and we know that you really strive to deliver meals that are nutritious. So we're looking at recipes that are low in sat fat, that have got hidden veggies, that are also a source of fiber. And everything we're going to show you today is school compliant as well. We'll be sharing all of the recipes and the product lists with you today. So if you miss something, don't worry, you'll also get a copy of the recording as well. So you can watch with a cup of tea in your own time. Because we're live, that means that we're reliant on our Wi-Fi and fingers crossed we won't have any issues. But if we do, just hold tight and we'll aim to get things up and running as quickly as we can for you. And also, we'd really, really love today to be as interactive as possible. So you can ask us questions. You can use the chat function at the bottom of your screen and we'll aim to ask as many questions as we can for you. I think that that's everything that I need to say. So let me stop talking and hand over to Wayne, who I think is going to start with a breakfast smoothie for us. Good morning, Gemma. Good morning. Yeah, I've, first of all, I'll start the day with a couple of breakfast dishes. Um, we've got a raspberry and apple smoothie, and I've done a breakfast pot uh, using uh, an Indian spice and a little bit of a healthier twist at the end. I'd like to start off first with the breakfast pot. <clears throat> we just got some uh, farmstead bacon, which is red tractor, great for food for life. A little bit of onion, um, some reduced sugar baked beans. I've also had some butter beans to that, just to give a bit of a creaminess. Some chopped tomatoes and a little bit of Carolan paste. Carolan paste is a great product for uh, education and healthcare, especially education, as it's free from all allergens. <clears throat> so into the pan first, just add a little bit of oil. And then my bacon. And you're using our farmstead bacon, so yeah, farm, aren't you? Yeah, farmstead bacon, which is which is uh, red tractor. So it's great for food for life. You could put a little twist on that and add a smoky bacon to that, give it a bit of smokiness. Or you could actually do without the bacon at all. You could swap that bacon for another protein, maybe chickpeas, uh, another bean. Or you could just top it with some egg at the end. Yeah. So it hasn't got to be the hasn't got to be bacon. Yep. Once that bacon's sealed, I'm just gonna add some onion. Halving towards one of our five a, five a day. And we were talking earlier that this dish is really good for bringing innovation into breakfast. Yeah, I mean it's not just breakfast, this dish could all be all be also be uh, served at brunch time. Mid-morning snack is great for schools. You mm -hmm. go into these schools and a lot of time it's all bread-based, carb-based. I think the humble baked bean could go a long way at a, a mid-morning break with uh, education. Looking forward to trying it. And me. <laughs> I've missed my breakfast this morning. I've had a banana, that's it. Been saving myself. I'm just gonna add the beans. And the tomatoes. Smells good. I'm adding the paste at the end. It's a finished product, so there's no need to sweat it out or cook it out. Uh, so none of the flavors will become bitter. And I'm just gonna let that simmer for a few minutes. got a touch of water. And could you use anything other than the Carolyn paste? If you, if you wanted to play around with the flavours, what other flavours could work? Yeah, I mean, you could also add a barbecue, a little bit of smoky paprika to give it the flavour. 
or you know Mexican and Peruvian are coming through so we could spice that up with a little bit of Cajun or fajita seasoning and there are a lot of flavors you could do there with a the humble baked bean <clears throat> just while that's cooking um, I'd like to switch through these ingredients for the breakfast smoothie um, a lot of the time children tend to have fruit juice or uh, a juice in the morning which is high in sugar not great for those teeth and at the end of my day I all seem to have a little bit of milk left and a little bit of yogurt still could be ingredients again some porridge oats so, so I find if you just add a um, 800 ml of milk a couple of hundred uh, ml of yogurt fresh or frozen raspberries depending on the time of year you could put a twist on that for your seasonal fruits today I've got a nice Cox's apple, apple. just gives you that sweetness um, a little bit of lemon juice which I feel just lifts it all and then I add some porridge oats which is great to add fibre which releases the energy for the children throughout the day also gives a creaminess to the dish um, which is great for not just um, children but it's great for the care as well we could actually fortify that for care using skim milk powder if we needed not to be so healthy let's just see how this dish is getting on Smelling really, really good. I can smell all of the spices coming through. So this dish is nearly there. We, we find on our counters when we are serving breakfast, you always seem to find uh, hash browns on the counter. Just feel that, you know, is it time that we start introducing the sweet potato? You don't really see it on school menus. Could we do a sweet potato wedge? Could we do a sweet potato hash? So today, for just quick and easiness, I've done a sweet potato to accompany our Indian spice breakfast pot. I like that idea, something a bit different. Yeah, it's good. Lots of colour, lots of flavour. Looks good, Chef. Just going to add a couple of sweet potatoes, soldiers to it. Sprinkle of coriander. And there we have our first dish of the day, uh, Indian spice breakfast pot with sweet potato soldiers. And to accompany it, we've got a raspberry and apple smoothie with the uh, porridge oats. Yeah, taste. Please do. Really, really tasty. Not too spicy, and just a really, really good balanced flavour. Yum. What are we looking at next? So, the, my second dish up today is going to be a uh, fish samosa. Let me ah. clear all these ingredients. <laughs> So many ingredients going on. <laughs> I'm laughing because you and I had a bit of a joke about this recipe in rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> because, did. <laughs> because I'll, I'll was, let you explain. Well, because I was very, very dubious about a fish samosa. And I remember saying to Wayne that this will never work. I'm not, I don't like the sound of it. But I have to say I was completely won over. And it's a really, really delicious recipe. And actually not that fishy. So, uh yeah, I'm looking forward to trying it again. So yeah, the Indian spice samosa. I think it's great for primary school children. Um, it's also great for secondary school as a main dish or grab and go. But it also fits well with the care sector. Great for um, uh, fortification. We can add a lot of uh, coconut cream to it to help fortify go on to the dementia ward for finger food so we're going to start off with one of our five a day we got some onions carrots potatoes peas and i've got some chickpeas there to help with the protein and i've got some just normal canned tuna don't be afraid just haven't got to be tuna if you're worrying about the school food plan you could swap the tuna for salmon works great as well and just got a little bit of garlic 
a little bit of veg stock, and again, the Carolan paste. Can you just remind us what, what product the Carolan paste is? We've had a question about that. What product? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, Indian spices all blended down with onion and garlic. Comes in a kilo tub, ready to use. It goes great through mayonnaise. You can flavor vegetables up to roast it. Uh, great to make a curry. So versatile and so, so easy to use as well. You can't really go wrong with it. So talk us through what you're doing here, Wayne. So into the pan, I'm just going to add a little bit of oil again, just to get the vegetables mm -hmm. sealed. going to get the hot, hot oil. <laughs> hot oil. <laughs> yeah, hot oil. We're going with hot oil. There we go. Just going to soften those lot slightly. And Wayne, we know that keeping children fuller for longer is really, really important. Yeah. How does this recipe help with that? Well, we've got lots of protein in there. And again, we've got a, a healthier carb um, by using the tortilla rather, rather than using a phyllo pastry, which is full of the, uh, the, the saturated fats and lots of oil and butter. So, you know, a, a samosa, um, a tortilla, all store covered ingredients within education and a lot easier to use and, and time consuming uh, using phyllo pastry. Just going to add my potatoes. Have you pre-cooked those? No, they're not pre-cooked. Okay. Uh, just dice them quite small so it's easier to fold together later. Yeah. Quick and easy to cook. Yeah. In with my garlic. So you're thinking this is more, uh, I guess, a lunchtime, lunchtime type of recipe. What, would you, what about serving it in the evening in the care sector, that kind of thing? It's great for an evening meal for the care sector. Great for snacking throughout the day. Yeah. Also, it could actually be served uh, brunch time or a mid-morning snack for education as well. But certainly, this this recipe could sit cold on a buffet for those Sunday evening buffets within the care sector. Just going to put my chickpeas through there. <clears throat> Some peas, which will give it a nice sweetness. And again, children are familiar with the carrots and the peas. But don't be afraid to, to change the vegetables around upon season. But the squash should go through that quite well. And Just, if you didn't want to use tuna? Yeah, yeah. We could use any white fish. Yeah. Or we could have used oily fish. So again, the oily fish would be better. Salmon would be fantastic through yeah. it, but for the care sector, yeah, you can put maybe a little bit of kipper through there for smokiness. Haddock could be great. <coughs> just got a little bit of stock rather than salt, just to help with the flavour and to season it. Try not to use salt. And then just to finish it, I'm using a little bit of uh, gusto tomato sauce, but you could use chopped tomatoes and reduce them down. Mix that all in. It's really, really simple. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that and let it simmer for about 10, 15 minutes. Just enough so the potatoes become al dente because by the time they're set to rest and we fill the tortillas and they've gone back through the oven, they should be nice and soft. <clears throat> Can you tell us a bit, Wayne, about what led you into the world of catering? Oh, well, it's one of those, you know. 
I uh, started out at school and I, I got asked to do a little part-time job um, washing up in a hotel back in the Midlands and it, it led from there really and then before you know it you're helping out prep vegetables and do a little bit of breakfast and I thought yeah this is great for me and then uh, went to the world of hotels and restaurants and I thought you know what I, I need an easier life this is too hard so I then joined the cost sector within care homes and universities and education which has led me to bid food with my broad knowledge of the cost sector to support our uh, customers. And you're really, really passionate about cost sector catering as well. Yeah, like you really I, I, are. I think there's a lot of room for improvement. I think I can help and support all our customers with the knowledge I've had, you know, over, over 30 years experience with it. Um, and our customers don't know the broad range that we've got in our catalogue to use for the cost sector. So tap into my, my services and help would be a great way to start. Perfect. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to trying this samosa. I've kept you talking, sorry. <laughs> so a little cheat. Here's some of the mix that I made earlier and I'm allowed to cool. It is easier to make sure that the tortillas are nice and soft. And Wayne, you're and all through. of the, um, the, the veg that you're using today is from our Oliver K range. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, just, just try and look at your seasons, as we said. You know, mm -hmm. today I've got uh, peas and carrots, which is store covered ingredients. But there's nothing wrong, you know, putting a bit of cauliflower through that or a bit of courgette. To, and again, you know, look at your winter vegetables where you could actually put a little bit of butternut squash through there. Yeah, change it around. Change it up. Variety is key to these children. So I'm just going to use a little bit of egg. We had a question about the tuna as well, and which tuna you were using for this recipe. I've, I've just used uh, the tin tuna. Again, this recipe came about while I was at home on furlough, store cutting ingredients, and we, we love our Indian food on a Friday night. I thought, what can I make? So we got some chickpeas and some tuna, and away I went, and it yeah. sort of came from there. But depending on where you're from, okay, tuna may not be for food for life or hit the school food plan but it would certainly certainly work towards it if you'd add some more chickpeas or you could swap that for fresh tuna but ideally salmon so it would become affordable for your primary and secondaries yeah i'm just going to pull a little bit of the mix in there and these for me would be ideal for uh primaries or our snacking for our care sector as a buffet item or for finger food. Just pop these onto the tray. A little bit of egg wash. Or you could use a little bit of milk. and then pop them in the oven. 10 minutes in the oven, 180, came out perfect. I like every good chef, the Blue Peter moment. Here's the ones we made earlier. They look really, really good. That's where I spoke before, these are great for primary. Uh, we've got handheld grab and go for secondary. Mm -hmm. Or care home as yeah. a buffet. So just, just to finish this dish, it'd be great for grab and go for secondaries. I like that it's a healthier spin, and that's what today's, or this session's yeah, all about, so just those healthier variations. Swaps. Yeah, so most people, if I said to you samosa, um, samosa, you'd be looking at uh, phyllo pastry, lots of oil, lots of butter. Today it's just a tortilla, a little bit of fresh, fresh fish in there. I'm just going to serve the dish with a little bit of whole grain rice. It's a great kind of lunch box type option, isn't it? Yeah. Keep letting chillers grab and go as a cold counter. Yeah, yeah. A couple in there. Again, I've made a quick curry sauce using the caroline paste. 
chopped tomatoes, a mm -hmm. little bit of the paste. And you can definitely claim with this recipe that it's high in protein as well. It is Didn't high in protein. You, you could add more chickpeas <laughs> to even get it even more high, yep. higher in protein. Just got a little bit of poppadom. Poppadoms as well. A little wow. bit of texture. And a sprig of coriander. Nice. And that's our next dish as a grab and go secondary school. Great. Looks amazing. Give it a try. I have to put my microphone down though. Thank you, Gemma. Is it okay if I just stand here and eat this now? Yeah, carry on. <laughs> all, all from store covered ingredients <laughs> with, a, with a healthier twist. And that could sit there in your car homes as finger food. I just, um, I can't taste the tuna, but in a like in a really good way and i like no, it's tuna it's, it's not that i don't like it it's just hidden with the tomatoes yeah. and the paste uh, it just really works a little bit of sweetness which is yeah. great for the primary schools like i don't think it would be off-putting for kids no no yummy gonna eat the rest What's up next, Chef? Okay, up next, again, is this, we're carrying on with the, the healthier trend and, and swaps. Um, we're gonna do a homemade falafel. Again, some of that are sitting at home wondering, you know, all the, all the falafels, or well, most of the falafels that you find are, are pre-fried, um, which again, is adding the saturated fats to the menu. And I thought, do you really need it? Yep. And they've all got hidden extras to them. And I've just got, Again, still a couple of ingredients. Just got some chickpeas. I've chosen carrot and peas today, um, but again, you could swap that around. But I find this recipe so versatile. Um, you could use your leftover cauliflower, broccoli, courgettes, change it around with seasons. Um, and to flavor it up, I'm just using a little bit of garlic, cumin, and uh, some coriander. But again, peas fit well with mint, basil, cumin. Do we could we swap that for some harissa, which is high on trend? Uh, maybe even put a little bit of kaolan through it to make um, an Indian spice one. Then Middle Eastern cuisine is a trend that we've had our eyes on for the last few years and it just continues to grow in yeah. popularity, doesn't it? And you've... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got, we got a bank of recipes that we've worked on that you can uh, tap into for Middle Eastern and uh, we are, as always, looking at new things and new recipes which will be ready to be shared with you guys. Um, after after Christmas so I'm just lightly breaking these down don't want to go too far with them and then for quick and ease it is just a case of adding the vegetables and I find once you break these vegetables in there gives it enough moisture to bring it all together so you're not adding a binding agent nothing no egg nothing at all no. it's just the natural ingredients I yeah. find the moisture of the vegetables once they've been grated will We'll bring it together as you'll see in a moment. Perfect. Gain a little bit of garlic. Add some cumin. Yeah, you've got to have cumin. We could put a little bit of harissa this time if oh, you yeah. wanted to. A little bit of lemon juice. And then some fresh fresh coriander. Is um is this vegan? Yes, it's vegan. Yeah. We've got nothing in there. And then we just bring all that together. I guess like, if you were pushed for time, you'd, you'd use pre-made falafel, but the whole point here is that yeah, you've got that healthier and spin I, on it. We have, and I think in a lot of um, education sites especially, the numbers with vegan are, are not so high, so five six portions probably maximum a day so it's quite easy to do yeah you know you've not got boxes sitting in the freezer where you could just use your store cupboard yeah fresh ingredients yeah i mean that's almost come together 
And ingredients from our sister company, Oliver K again. Yep. yep. All ingredients from Oliver K. Again, we have a seasonal report that comes out. So if you're unsure of what our seasons are, are in for your uh, vegetables and fruit, you know, ask your account manager to send them details through. Mm -hmm. So as you see, that's come together. Out comes a tray. Just going to mould them together. So you're not putting it, um, breadcrumbs around? No, nothing on them. You know, a lot, a lot so, of people are putting gram, gram flour yeah. into the fryer. Doesn't need it. And there's three to get it started. Into your then, again, 180. 15, 20 minutes, and they'll come out perfect. And what trends are you seeing at the moment? Yeah, I mean, the, the trends we're starting to work towards are um, Burmese, Peruvian. Mm. We're heavily looking at um, Mexican and Peruvian. So hopefully, uh, come the new year, we're going to have a, uh, a range of recipes ready to go for those. Asian's still there, regional Chinese, yeah. which we've just got a bank of recipes to go with, which is something we're going to probably look at again in Easter for the education guys. Yeah. And I think like, different cuisines were growing anyway, but the pandemic has just meant that more consumers are more open to different flavours, experimenting yeah. with different cuisines. People have been doing that in their homes. And that's kind of filtering down into the out-of-home sector. Yeah, yeah. And again, let's not, let's not forget in those trends, the, the, the British side of things, you know. Yeah. It, it's still there on, high, on everybody's high agenda. Fish and chips never seems to go away. Well, you can't beat fish and chips, can you? So again, just going to finish this as a grab-and-go box. Uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of lettuce. But you could serve this in primary schools with a little bit of pita, a little bit, a bit, a little bit of carrot, peas, maybe a slaw. <clears throat> Again, would fit well within the care sector on a Sunday night buffet or as finger food. Just doing a little bit of um, red pepper hummus. Cover sunflower seeds. Really fresh. Got a nice little bit of guacamole to sit with it. Bit of cherry tomato. And a homemade carrot pea and Looks brilliant. Falafel. Really colourful. Can I try? A grab and go box for secondaries. Thank you. I am going to grab this, go over here. Tasty. Mm. Does it need to be deep fried? Not at all. No, not at all. Okay, I'm on to my final, final recipe for this morning. And what better way to finish off with a dessert, which is low in sugar, and we've got lots of seasonal. Uh, fruits that can be used in this recipe. It's such a quick, easy recipe. So, a lot, a lot of our cooks in these schools or in the care homes are always using white flour. I've just chose a wholemeal flour today. Again, this could be self-raising, or today I'm just using a plain one. So I'm going to add a little bit of um, baking powder to it. I'm adding 
just 45 grams to um, the whole whole 10 portion of a recipe, so it's under the five grams of added sugar. That's quite low, isn't it? Yeah, you've just, deliberately just kept the sugar low. low. Yeah, low sugar recipe, but we get our sweetness from our mm -hmm. British apples. We've got a sweetness from the raspberries, a little bit of an es vanilla essence going in there to help with flavour. Yeah. So the dish in the end will give you like a nutty sweet um, with a little bit of tartness there. In goes the vanilla essence. In with the oil. So again, I've chosen chose an olive oil rather than a butter. It's almost like a batter. And you can't taste that it's olive oil, can you? No, not. Doesn't come through. Yeah. At all in the recipe. Yeah. I think when we were rehearsing, I think I ate literally half the cake. <laughs> it's so it good. <laughs> I can't do that today. Surprising how sweet it comes. Yeah, it's, it's really, really sweet. Like you wouldn't know that it was reduced sugar. And then I'm just gonna add the raspberries. I think we're being told that we're tight on time. Tight on time, we're nearly finished. So all we need to do then is grate in the apples, which again, we're using all the skin, which is slightly better than a tinned apple. Yeah, all of the added fiber. Yeah, all the yeah. added fiber. You mix that round. Do you bother coring the apple? No, not the core, Just obviously not. But the cores you could actually put into a pan with a little bit of water, a little bit of syrup, mm -hmm. uh, sugar to make a syrup, and that'd be great for a hydration drink. Um, then into, a, into the tin. Bake 35 to 40 minutes, again on about 180. And there we have our finished apple and raspberry. So you literally, all in, one, all in one bowl, all in one bowl. job done. Yep. Perfect. So again, this is great for primary schools as a dessert, which you could add a little bit of custard if you wanted to. I will. Thank you. It's good. It'd be great in packed lunches. It could be great on a secondary as grab and go. Mm. We're just going to drop a couple of raspberries on the side of it. You really get the raspberry flavour. And to finish it, a little bit of creme fraiche. It's yummy. It's really, it's really sweet. It's perfect. And, and again, it could sit well as a afternoon tea within the care sector or as a dessert. That's me done for today. <sighs> Thanks, Chef. Thank you, Gemma. That was brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really, really good. Great recipes. Lots of Thank different, you. lots of new ideas. Twists on some classics there. Yeah, lots of swaps, healthy swaps. Yep, healthy Think swaps. about your store cupboard ingredients, low cost, low sugar, low fat. Great. Thank you. Good. Okay, wow. That's all we've got time for in this session. So um, thank you so much for tuning in. We really hope that we brought you some new ideas and some inspiration this morning um, to you wherever you are. Um, we've got lots more support available for the cost sector and you can find all of our support on our website, which is bidfood.com dot co dot uk um, including our caterers campus platform which is our e-learning platform for the care sector and a whole host of support for schools as well and also if you've not yet checked out our talking food with bid food podcast please do check it out again you can find it on our website and across all podcast platforms We'll be sharing everything, as I said at the start, so you'll get the product list and you'll also get a recording of the session um, in your inbox. And we are back in the kitchen at 11.05, where Damon and Joe will be looking at uh, ways that you can unlock your menu. So we really, really hope that we can see you again then. Thank you so much for tuning in.